I have another low-carb ketogenic meal I want to share with you. Today, it will be pemmican rachot. If you're interested in finding out what that is and how I cook mine, keep watching. So what is a pemmican rachot and how is it made? Well, let's start with the pemmican. So pemmican has been around for a long, long, long time. Basically, what pemmican is is dried meat that has been powdered and then added to animal fat that has been rendered liquid, allowed to harden up, wrapped in waterproof coverings, and kept until such time there was no fresh food to use. It was considered a survival food. Now, it was often also had other ingredients added to it, like dried and powdered berries, and you can add a number of different things to it if you want to. But at its most basic form, it is just dried meat and rendered animal fat. And... You know, that doesn't sound all that appetizing. It can be. It can be edible all by itself, and it's intended to be eaten all by itself. However, if you have other ingredients available to you, maybe you came across some fresh vegetables or even some older vegetables, but you came across something else that you want to add to that, then you can make two things. You can make a rubabu, which is basically a pemmican stew, or you can make a rachot, which is a fry-up in a fry pan with these additional ingredients. And that's what I'm going to be doing today with my own spin on it, my own twist. So probably the easiest thing to do is to turn the camera around, show you what I've got here for ingredients, get a fire started in my fire pit, and then cook it up. So as I mentioned, the foundation or the basis for this meal is the pemmican itself. And I have made some pemmican in the past and vacuum sealed it and keep it in my freezer. Not that it needs to be, it just needs to be kept dry. It'll last for years and years without any refrigeration. But I, th I think by doing this, vacuum sealing it and put it in the freezer, I have indefinite shelf life for this. So I actually made pucks out of the pemmican in this, uh, in this example and by using a silicone uh, muffin tin. I'll show more about that in another video. And I've actually weighed out each of the pucks and calcula calculated out the calories for it. So this specific chunk of pemmican comes in at 62 grams, and I know it has 341 calories. That's not a full meal. It's a good-sized snack, but it's not a full meal. So what can we add to it? So as I mentioned, at its most basic, I showed is when you have some vegetables. Oftentimes they were potatoes, but it could be any root vegetable, or it can be anything you want. In this case, I'm going to be using uh, red and green, or yellow and green peppers and onions. Those are going to be my vegetables that I have already pre-cut up in this container. So I'll be mixing those with the pemmican as the pemmican melts and I'll show you how I'm going to do that just to make it a little quicker, a little easier and then frying the vegetables up. The fat is already provided by the pemmican. I don't have to add any fat to it, and that's the, one of the nice things about cooking with pemmican. Once the, the vegetables are all fried up, I intend on cracking an egg over top of it, covering that up and allowing the egg to cook on top of the cooked vegetables with pemmican. And just as the egg is finishing off, I have some cheddar cheese. So between the cheddar cheese, the pemmican, the egg, uh, I have quite a good protein and fat count and very low carb at the same time with the vegetables that I have here. All right, so obviously the first thing I have to do is get a fire started in my firebox freestyle. All right, so my fire in the firebox freestyle is dying down to some beautiful, beautiful coals in there. Still quite a bit of heat though, and uh, maybe a little bit too much for what I'm going to be doing next, but by the time I'm ready, that should be down to a reasonable heat. So, uh, my carbon steel pan, I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to give you the benefit of my experience and what I've learned so far about cooking with pemmican. So, at home, I've done this, and you have a lot more control over the heat, of course. And uh, what I failed to do the first time I tried it was to minim make the uh, or cut the pemmican up into smaller pieces. I just dropped it in like that, not in the packaging, of course, but dropped it right into my pan. And uh, as quickly as the pemmican dissolved or melted with the heat, it was also starting to carbonize the meat and starting to get a little bit of a burnt flavor on it. So I learned the way to do this is to cut this up into as small as uh, pieces as you can. So I'm really going to cheat. I brought my little grater, my little field grater out so that I could grate it right into the pan, put my vegetables right in on top of it so as it melts it starts to fry the the vegetables up you can see the tallow you can even see a little bit of extra fat that came out on top so yeah i'm going to put this right into the pan by doing this so easy can you see what i'm what i'm getting when i do this 
So pemmican being a one-to-one -one ratio by weight of tallow and dried beef, uh, it's pretty dry all by itself. There's, there's a good amount of fat, but you have to understand that fat is, is combined with the meat to make it a fairly dry substance, as you can see. So as a result, when you melt this to cook with it, it doesn't take much for it to burn. So that'll be the trick, is to monitor it very closely and don't give it a chance to burn if you can. Almost there. Try not to take the tops of my fingers off. Getting to a point where I can't hold on to it any longer, so I think the easiest thing to do is to eat that. And that's okay. I don't mind the taste of that all by itself. So there we go. There's my pemmican all ready, and I think my coals are pretty much ready. What I'll do is I'll reposition the camera just so you can get a better see. And I'll put this on, put my vegetables in, start stirring them around to keep them moving so they don't burn. And then we'll get ready for the next step. So my fire has died down a lot, but there are... Well, I can't hold my hands there. You can't quite see the flame. The flame is all but gone, but there are a lot of heavy or hot coals inside of there. So you'll see how quickly this starts to render down as that pan gets hot. And I'll be ready to move it around as it does. So tallow is quite resistant to the heat. I mean, that's the whole point of it. Uh, it's, it's shelf stable, meaning it doesn't require refrigeration. It stays hard even uh, during the summer, unless it gets really, really hot. And then all it does is just start to get soft. It doesn't actually melt. It just, uh, there, it's starting to melt now. It just starts to get soft. Hopefully, I think the camera's starting to pick it up. It is starting to melt. Now, I do have a little bit of cooking oil, ghee, and a few other things in my kit. If I think that this is starting to look dry, I can add a little bit more oil to it, but I don't think I'm going to need to. In fact, time to get this stuff in there now. My green peppers went to mush. Oh, garlic. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot until I opened the container. and that I, was, I remembered very quickly because it has this nice, strong smell. And I should have my leather glove handy here because I want to be able to move this pan as quickly off the quick fire if I think it's starting to get a little carried away. That's doing good, though. All right, that's starting to work well. You can see the chunks of food are quite big. Uh, traditionally, potato, whatever root vegetables they might have, I suppose carrots, squash, turnips. Turnips I would use in here, but the others are not considered a low-carb vegetable, so they're, they're not on the ketogenic or low-carb diet. However, if you're not on a ketogenic or low-carb diet, you can put in whatever you want. So one thing I have not mentioned yet, I'll be doing momentarily, is spices. When I make the pemmican, I leave it plain. I don't add any salt, which will actually work against the pemmican lasting for a long time, believe it or not. I don't add any salt, any garlic, anything of a, a spicy nature, because my experience has been, is for whatever reason, it starts to really add flavor. Uh, how should I say? Too much flavor. It kind of gets stronger and stronger. So I'll carry my spice kit and spice it up as I need it. That way, whatever it is I'm doing, will get the spices that I want for it. So I'm adding a little bit of herbs, a little bit of Tex-Mex spice, and salt. I have to have a little bit of salt. Sea salt in this case. Oh yeah, that's working nice. Oh, the smell. Oh my goodness, the smell. Okay, so this does take a few moments, so what I'll do is I'll cut away until I'm ready to 
do the next step, which will be to add an egg on top of this. So as you can see, I put the, my pie plate on top just to allow it to retain some heat inside. And as the fire died down, I did have to throw a stick or two in just to keep the heat going. Think about cooking with fire, right? You have to constantly monitor your heat so that it doesn't burn your food and doesn't die down and stop the cooking. All right, I'm thinking that is ready. Very close if not. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of pushing everything into the center, creating a bit of a bed for my egg. How's the fire going? Fire is down quite low. Can you see what I've done here? There's my vegetables. You can see the uh, pemmican all distributed all over the vegetables. It's not burnt this time. I did a good job of that. Yep, I've got just enough heat to keep doing this. So let's take the egg out. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the egg in whole. I'm not whipping it or anything else. I just want it to sit on top. Not very traditional in terms of rachodes, but uh, this adds a lot of flavor, a lot of nutrition, a lot of fat and protein to it. And I'll just cover it up give the egg a few minutes to cook like that. Created a bit of a mini oven. I'm not going to go through the effort to try and put some coals on top. It's not really necessary. And uh, when I go to put the cheese on, I'll show you where I'm at. So this is a good example of trying to manage the heat. Threw in a couple small sticks and now I've got too much heat. But ruined? Nope, not ruined. Unfortunately, what did happen though is my egg broke. I was moved the uh, everything in it, all the eggs still off to one side. Yeah, no, it looks okay, good. So the only thing left now, I'm going to do this off of the heat, somewhere here, right here. No, not there. On top of those little pieces of wood, is throw the cheese on. Because you can see I've got too much flame happening now. Cover it back up, let the residual heat in the fry pan work on it for a minute so that I don't burn the rechaud underneath. Maybe I'll just hold it there and just take it on and off. That's another way of doing it, is just move it on, move it off, move it on, move it off. It's a bit trickier to do this, but what all I'm looking for now is just for the cheese to melt. Everything is cooked, the egg is cooked, it's just trying to melt the cheese a little bit. Yeah, that's how easy it is. I put in a few small sticks, thinking that's all I needed for the heat, and there's what you get, a whole lot of flame. I need to have a nice little platform for this to sit on there. I think we're just about ready. Oh yes, we are. Everything has melted, the cheese is melted. So what I'll do now is, uh, I'll probably put a pot of water on for a coffee, but I'll set the camera up so we can do the taste test. All right, my pemmican rachaud is ready. Let me give you a glimpse of it before I do the taste test. See if I can manage this. There, okay, so you will see some blackening on some of the onions especially, and they were the ones that were kind of the outliers in the fry pan. Everything else seems to be fine, not burnt. Uh, that's how easily and how quickly you can lose control of your fire or it can get too hot. It's not so much lose control, but that's why you have to watch and manage your fire constantly. Let's do the taste test. So what does my pemmican rechaud taste like? Mm. Wow, okay. There's an interesting flavor underneath this. I gotta turn the pull the camera down a tiny bit here. There is an interesting flavor in here. Now I did add spices, I added uh, salt and uh, hot sauce, not hot sauce, but uh, Tex-Mex spice 
and a little bit of herbs. That's what it is. It's the herbs that I'm tasting now. Uh, despite the darkening, and it would have been dark regardless because the pemmican is dark when you uh, put it in the pan. Mm. Despite the fact that it got a little dark, it's not burnt. I thought it was. I thought it was actually going to be a little bit burnt. A little crispy here and there, but not burnt. I don't get that carbonized, you know, like I'm eating ashes kind of a taste. No, this worked out well. A little bit non-traditional in that I added the egg and the cheese. But it's your meal. You can do whatever you want. And since this is a ketogenic meal, I needed to amp up the fat and the protein some. And the egg and the cheese seemed like a great way to do it. And it was. Mm. We say this every time we get out here. Food always tastes better cooked in the woods. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's just I'm getting a little bit more experienced in making food with pemmican. But this is much better than it was the last two times I tried this at home. The flavor is there. Oh, yeah. The texture is there. Oh, yeah. This is great. Okay. Let's wrap this video up. So this has been the second video I have made where I have done some cooking with the pemmican. The other one was a rubabu or a stew. And this one is a rochaud. Uh, yeah, they're just two alternative ways of cooking with pemmican. I do have a video in the making showing how I make pemmican. That'll be coming out soon, hopefully, is the best I can give it. Uh, it, there's a bit of work to put in a bit video together like that, but I will be talking more about pemmican, how you can use it, carrying it with you, uh, that type of thing. I guess what I'll do now is open it up to you. Do you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions on how I can use pemmican while I'm cooking in the woods? Any alternative ingredients to what I've done here? Don't say potatoes, <laughs> because I've already mentioned that's, that's not on my diet right now. Yeah, I'll, I'll open it up to you. And uh, if you have any other suggestions for meals you'd like me to try out here in the woods, put those in the comments section below. I will be putting the ingredients in the video description. I'll do my best to calculate the macros for this, but uh, everything should be there, hopefully. All right, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.